Chipotle Mexican Grill is a family favorite, but it's very expensive to eat there. Making dishes at home that are inspired by the restaurant has saved us so much money and allowed us to eat our favorites while keeping all of us happy despite our different dietary preferences. This unassuming can of chipotle in adobo sauce is the star of this video where I'll share some of our favorite chipotle restaurant inspired recipes. This is the ingredient that goes into that famous chipotle chicken. Making this marinade at home is so easy and it's so versatile. It can be used for all kinds of protein, not just chicken. I even add chipotle to beans to give it an extra kick of flavor that makes it so savory that it pairs so well with perfectly cooked basmati rice. And if there are any leftovers, I make them into our very own creation, a vegan loaded Mexican fried rice. Add a dollop of homemade guacamole, wrap it in a tortilla, and my boy is very happy. Today, I'll share how I prepare this whole can of peppers to use in these recipes. To start, I must warn that these peppers can stain and they have a very strong smell. I learned the hard way to wear a glove and do not use an ice cube tray that you care about or want to use for anything else. It will leave a hint of chipotle smell to it. For this reason, I use washed out trays from food packages to hold this. This is a tray from a bag of fig cookies. Once I'm done with it, I can still wash it out and recycle it. Using this tray gives me a surface I can use to remove the seeds. Removing the seeds lessens the amount of spice in these peppers. I try to remove as much as I can. This does take time, but this 12 ounce can will keep us in chipotle type meals for months. Once the peppers are de-seeded, I pour them and the remaining sauce into a magic bullet and give it a good blend. Any blender, even a food processor will work well here. Then pour the puree back into the cookie tray and spread it evenly. I mark it at this point because it gives me a good guide to use later on when it's frozen. Once the peppers are frozen, I set it on the counter for about 10 minutes so it can thaw enough for me to cut it into cubes. Then I store the cubes in a glass jar in the freezer. The glass jar is perfect for this because it contains the powerful smell of these peppers. Now that we have our chipotle cubes, cooking with this is so much easier and there's very little waste. I've actually never tasted chipotle's chicken, but my son and husband say this recipe is very close. I modified it from Megan's recipe at culinaryhill.com, which I'll link in the description box below along with my recipe and my modifications. This marinade recipe rocks because other than the chipotle pepper, it uses very simple pantry ingredients that most of us have on hand already, and it's made in that same blender. Start by roughly chopping one large red onion. Add six whole cloves of garlic. My recipe in the description box will also include the metric weights because it's so much more accurate. And as you can see, I like pouring right into the cup, so I have less dishes to do. Four tablespoons of tasteless oil, two teaspoons cumin, one teaspoon black pepper, two teaspoons salt, two teaspoons of Mexican oregano if you can find it. I used Italian seasoning because that's what I have on hand. Four tablespoons of the chipotle pepper cubes and two ounces of water, or as much as you need to get it to blend. Give it a good blend, and once you see that tornado in the middle, that means that it's done. This marinade is enough for 10 pounds of protein. I store half of it in a small glass jar for the freezer for a very easy meal prep next time. You can use the protein of your choice. I know Chipotle uses dark meat chicken, but it's great to use on white meat as well, which is what we're using today. If you're using chicken breasts, it's really best to pound these flat so they cook faster and more evenly. I use a washed out cereal liner and a rolling pin to do this. Then add that marinade to the chicken, mix it well and let it marinate for at least four hours. Overnight is even better. My husband grills these on our community grill. He grilled it for about five minutes on each side until the internal temperature reached 165 degrees. We've also just cooked this on the stovetop in a skillet or even in the oven. Because of all the oil and onion in the marinade, it's actually very forgiving in the cooking process. Having the char is nice 
and adds an extra layer of flavor, but it's really not necessary at all. This marinade has tons of flavor. We've tried this with steak and pork, and my family enjoys that too. I've also tried it with tofu and thought it was delicious. I like it a lot more than chipotle sofritas because that's usually way too salty for me. This makes a large amount of protein that lasts us for several meals. The cooked meat freezes well in small sandwich bags, which I know are wasteful, but I feel they're less wasteful than a full-on freezer bag. Partitioning it out in this way also makes it easy for my husband and son to add meat to their meals whenever they like. We cook and eat a lot of rice. Basmati is the rice that Chipotle serves and it's the one rice that has eluded me for some time. It always came out too soggy or too dry. Here are two fail-proof methods that I've learned over the years. The first method requires a heavy bottomed pot. It results in a block of rice basically, but when fluffed it comes out perfectly. Measurement is key here. Basmati likes a 2-3 to three ratio of rice to water. I use an applesauce container. These are perfectly 4 ounces, so 2 will make 1 cup. Then wash the rice. Always wash rice. I do this by filling the pot with some water and use both hands to rub the grains. This removes the dirt, debris, and excess starch. Repeat two to three times until the water runs clear. It's best to move the rice to the edge so there's a triangle basically and this way your rice won't avalanche down when you're trying to get all that water out. Then add in three of the containers full of water. Let the rice soak for 60 minutes. After 60 minutes, bring that whole pot to a boil. Once it comes to a boil, stir it to make sure that the grains are not stuck to the bottom. Then cover and cook on the lowest heat for 15 minutes. After 15 minutes, turn off the heat and let it sit for 10 minutes. Do not unlid the pot. When it's done, you'll have perfectly separate grains, no stickiness, and it has a nice chew. The second method I learned from my Persian colleague. He told me his wife cooks rice like pasta. She uses eight parts water to one part rice, but you know me, that's too much time and resources for me. So I cut it back to four parts water and one part rice, and it works great. When I add in the rice, I add about half a teaspoon of salt and a few bay leaves like chipotle does. Cook uncovered on a medium heat until the rice is al dente, just as you would cook pasta. Mostly cooked, but not quite. This takes between 10 to 12 minutes. Drain well and put it all back in that same pot. Cover and let it sit for 10 minutes. This yields perfectly cooked rice every time. Flavor with lime juice, lime zest if you like it extra limey, and cilantro if you like that. This recipe makes a full pound of dried beans. It has a very savory flavor that pairs well with just plain rice. You can use black beans or pinto beans, which is more in line with what Chipotle uses. But we love peruano beans, so that's what we're using today. Start by sorting and washing the beans. Here I'm adding some previously chopped and frozen white onion, and this is about half a large white onion. I'm just going to use the water to get all of the onion out of the glass jar. I fill the crock with about two and a half to three inches of water above the beans. Chipotle's beans seems to be flavored very simply. I like to add this additional seasoning to make it more savory for me because I don't eat the chicken, which has a lot of the chipotle flavor in it. So adding the chipotle peppers to this recipe gives me that chipotle experience as a vegetarian. For the seasoning, I use three cloves of minced garlic, one teaspoon cumin, one teaspoon salt, one teaspoon of Mexican oregano or Italian seasoning, which is what I'm using here, a quarter teaspoon of black pepper, 
and two tablespoons of chipotle peppers. This recipe is very similar to my vegan slow cooker beans, which I'll link the video to up in the eye above if you're interested. You'll notice that I don't soak the beans because I don't notice any difference in the cooking time or resulting texture. Most of the time I make this right when I wake up before work so that it's ready for dinner that night. I cook everything on high for eight hours. When it's done, it doesn't look so appetizing, but mix it a bit and everything looks beautiful. I really enjoy eating these beans with the lime rice and frozen corn, while my husband and son prefer to have it plain with their rice and chicken, along with some shredded lettuce. And I think that's where these modular meals really shine through. You can take what you like and leave the rest, or even add in simple additions like corn and lettuce, those can really change the whole profile and dining experience so that it's not the same exact dish every night. Guacamole freezes very well, so when avocados go on sale, I buy as much as I can and process them to make single serving guacamole packets using washed out applesauce containers. It does take time, but we have the convenience of fresh homemade guacamole and they thaw very quickly. My tip here is to cut the avocado using the cutting board as much as possible. Avoid cutting into the hand because that can cause injury, especially when trying to take out that seed. Leave the avocado on the board and work the knife into the seed. This way, if you miss, you're hitting the board and not your hand. Also, when slicing the avocado, do so when it's on the board and not in your hand. We season these simply with just some lime, salt, and pepper to taste. Mash it up and fill the applesauce containers with guacamole. Throwing the containers down onto a flat surface will help to remove any of the air bubbles that are caught in the guacamole. Then cover the top with a small plastic bag cut into squares that are large enough to cover the containers all the way to the edge. It's important to press out all the air from the edges of the container. This will protect the guacamole from freezer burn. The guacamole keeps well for several months in the freezer. They're great for a quick addition to chipotle style burritos or even for lunch boxes. I put it in frozen in my son's lunch box and they're thawed and ready to eat by lunchtime. The final recipe is one of my son's favorite. It gets two thumbs up from him. I've seen him eat it for breakfast cold out of the fridge. The great thing about this meal is it's made from leftovers and it's very filling. In a large skillet, I add two tablespoons of oil, one chopped medium onion. Any onion will do, red or white, we've done both and it's delicious. Once it's browned, I add some cubed potatoes. These were previously blanched, frozen, and thawed. Two cups of leftover rice, two cups of drained black beans. These are the beans from that bean recipe that I shared a little earlier one can of drained stewed tomatoes, two tablespoons of chipotle peppers, one teaspoon paprika, one tablespoon cumin, half teaspoon black pepper, and salt to taste. Oh, and two cloves of garlic chopped. This is such a quick and simple dinner to throw together because all of these ingredients are already cooked. We're just warming everything through and adding some additional flavoring to all of the ingredients. This dish came about because these were left over in the fridge at the end of one week. Not wanting to waste anything, I just added a can of tomatoes and some extra seasoning, and my son really ended up enjoying this. So now we make this often and on purpose. I hope this video got you inspired to make your own restaurant favorites at home. We were able to eat a week's worth of dinners or at least 21 servings at home for just about $16. That's less than $1 per serving. That could be the cost of one person eating at Chipotle one time. We're also able to tailor the dishes to our tastes and dietary preferences. I think that's wins all around. Well, thank you so much for hanging out with me and I wish you happy cooking. See you in the next one. Bye. Aww, we can't wait. We need to 
your signature thumbs up? Mother.